<laughs> All right, uh, quiet on the set, everybody. Quiet, quiet. All right, ready for mic check? Yeah, check, check. One, two, one, two. Mic is hot. All right, then in three, two, one. We are on the air. <laughs> From 91.5 WRCA Ryerson Conservation Area Radio, we welcome you to another edition of Nocturnal Frequency, our evening podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Katie Did, and we're delighted to have a human audience join us in the Woodland Studio this evening. Hi everyone, Sam the Snowy Tree Cricket here. Glad you could be with us tonight. You're probably all asking yourselves, why are a tree cricket and a Katie Did doing a podcast? <laughs> well, for starters, he has a proboscis for radio. <laughs> Actually, we're really here tonight to dispel some of those myths that are flying around out there about nocturnal creatures such as ourselves. True. We became really frustrated many years back when we learned that the beautiful sounds that you and I make, people thought that the cicadas made those noises. Ugh! <laughs> Rolling, grinding, buzzing cicadas. Oh. Uh, it's like a garage band playing all summer long. <laughs> to begin with, I mean, they call during the day. Yes, and while it certainly has been a learning curve for our listening audience, they did learn early on in episode three of our podcast the cicadas make that terrible droning noise using their abdomen. You know, Kyle, I always say, all abs, no finesse. <laughs> <laughs> While I understand that all of us calling insects need to call to find a mate, some of us do it more elegantly than others. For instance, you and I use our wings, and we slide them gently together, much like a violinist draws her bow across the strings. <laughs> I'll show you. <laughs> Katie did, Katie didn't. Katie did, <laughs> Katie didn't. Now you. Katie, Katie did, did, Katie didn't. Katie, didn't. Katie, Katie did, did, Katie didn't. didn't. Lovely. Oh, I tell you, that's music to my ears. <laughs> <laughs> you know, ears on a head, it's just so human. <laughs> our ears are on our knees, much more refined. <laughs> yes, and speaking of refined, our intelligent audience also learned on episode 27, about your wonderful means of amplification. How an insect so tiny can make a song that echoes throughout the entire woodland. Now I was thinking, as a special surprise for this in-studio audience, perhaps you can show them your apparatus and how you make the sound. <laughs> oh, I don't think so. Oh, come on, Please. Oh, if you insist. <laughs> my symphony of sound, I raise my wings up into the air and blast my call through a hole that I've chewed in a leaf. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> All right, everyone. on this evening's show. So let's get started. All right, our first question tonight comes in the form of a tweet from Nighthawk2015. Mm -hmm. uh, long time listener, first time tweeter. It seems he's got some <coughs> competition for the nighttime insects that he loves to eat from some furry flying critters. Ah. He asks, could these be bats? I thought they, they were blind. And don't they eat blood? Please advise. Ah, yes, common question on the show. Well, Nighthawk 2015, you are right. The, it's, the critters you are speaking of are, in fact, bats. And our local bats love to feast on mosquitoes and moths and never eat blood, not even on Halloween. <laughs> and while they can see, their eyes are not as complicated as mine. <laughs> but they choose to use their ears to find their food through something called echolocation. Ah, uh, echolocation, excellent cotton. Uh, topic tonight, Kyle. One of my favorites. I know. You know, echolocation, it's kind of like playing a game of Marco Polo with your dinner. <laughs> the bat sends out a signal that bounces off the insect, comes back to the bat, and he knows exactly where to find his food, which is really cool. 
Unless you're a nighttime flying insect like you and I. Yes. <laughs> well, we have a reason to be afraid of bats because we might become their dinner. <laughs> you as humans have no need to fear bats at all. I couldn't agree more, Kyle. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I mean, bats do much more good than harm. Why, what's not to love about a critter that can eat up to a thousand mosquitoes in a night? So, yes. Nighthawk 2015, nothing to fear from our local bats, except maybe a little extra competition at that nighttime bug buffet. Yes. <laughs> uh -huh. Now, our next listener is sending me a text from the 847 area code, and he writes, All of my fourth grade friends tell me that the daddy long leg spider is the most venomous spider in the world, and, but its fangs are too weak to penetrate the human skin. Should I believe them? I haven't seen this topic on Wildcrats yet, so I'm not sure what to think. Well, 847, I think you're up past your bedtime. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, you shouldn't always believe everything your friends tell you. That daddy long legs you're referring to is this guy right here, also known as a harvestman. Yes, and this is not even technically spider. And this eats dead plants and bits of animals for its food. They don't even have fangs or venom. What do the wild crats think of that? <laughs> uh, well, it's been a very inspiring conversation tonight. And I think we have time for one more question from our listening audience. So what's on the horn, Sam? <laughs> Something new coming in I've never seen before. It's called a Snapchat from Stan the Snapping Turtle. Uh, he sent in a picture of a great horned owl, and he says, uh, took this picture of the wisest creature in the forest today. Well, let's show the audience the picture. Uh, I can't. Why not? It's gone. What do you mean it's gone? <laughs> I don't know. It disappeared. <laughs> well, wiggle the mouse I a little bit. I am wiggling the mouse. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, it was a technical difficulty. Oh, He's wireless mice. <laughs> oh, we'll after the show. Maybe he's just really well camouflaged. Yeah. I don't know. Okay, well, folks, we're back. And the myth of the wise old owl is a long-standing one. And humans think that the owl is wise because, well, they think he looks like a human, wearing glasses. <laughs> but so, the owl rates very low on the bird IQ scale. So true, Kyle. Mm -hmm. You know, they've got a lot going on in that head, but it's mostly to help them catch their food. Those big eyes for seeing mm -hmm. well at night, and their excellent hearing for finding food. Why, they can hear a mouse squeak up to three football fields away. <laughs> It works. <laughs> so while there's a lot going on there, it's mostly for finding dinner. And yeah, leaves little room in the skull for brain power. <laughs> now the crow, on the other hand, is considered one of the smartest birds, coincidentally also one of the biggest contributors to this radio program. <laughs> and he says the owl is a bit of a bird brain. <laughs> <laughs> Mind, that sound tells us it's just about time for us to start our nightly symphony. We've yes. come to the end of another episode of Nocturnal Frequencies. Yes, and we invite you to listen in tomorrow night when we discuss the riveting topic of flying squirrels. Do they really fly? <laughs> From 91.5 WRCA Public Radio, we thank you and wish you good night. And we're out. Yay.